I've decided to share my reflection about the Super 8 today from the baptismal font. And I've chosen this for a very specific reason. First of all, this font sits on the place, the stone, where couples share their wedding vows. Of the six parents, couples of parents today who bring their children, the eight, to confirmation, three of them were married here. Of the eight children that come to make their vows of confirmation, five of them were baptized here. And so this is the place we return. In real time, in the 88 other years that we've had confirmation here on this day, at this time of year, uh, we would have been here with Kneeler and a full congregation of family and friends. We come here today to remember and to celebrate. Would you join me in prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. Well, you've already seen enough. I mean, you've seen Mr. Jones, Mr. Williams, Reverend Corzine, Ms. Blair, and me with unicorn crowns on. That was enough for the day. That was a testimony of faith. That was testifying to our faith today. And you've seen them step up and speak their vows of uh, baptismal grace, of confirmation of their baptism vows. And so it's been great already. I just want to share a few words. We have been in a season of love, in case you haven't been paying attention through the Easter season, one week after another. In the Gospel of John, in the letters of John, we've been hearing about the love that holds us together as people of faith in Christ. And some of you re may remember that the entire Lenten journey was a journey back to love. And so we have been talking love, living love since February 17th in worship. That's a long time and we're just getting started because the whole faith journey is really a journey of love. And today's witness is a witness of love and a witness of truth to the gospel that is all about loving one another. That's really what it all comes down to. There are a lot of people that will tell you that we have to judge those who aren't just like we are. That's not what Jesus said. Don't listen to that. Listen to your heart. Listen to the heart of love that speaks within you. Listen to the gospel that cries out to you. Even in the choosing of the disciple, the 12th disciple today in Acts, by the way, a confirmation that the first church was a congregational church. They took a vote for heaven's sakes, right? They had to decide between one person or another. If that doesn't make the first church of Christians congregational, I don't know what does. But when they choose, they choose Matthias and they choose him for all of the gifts he has. So gifts and love, truth in action is what our faith is about. And let me tell you about eight of the most remarkable Christians that I have been honored to know. They are Lila and Elias and Jake and Maya and Ruby and Elijah and Sam and Abby. With their teachers, Jackie Dean and Jonathan Miller and me, joining together with their parents who were a part of teaching in this process, they took a remarkable journey this year. And I can tell you it's a journey like no other confirmation class has ever had. There were things they were denied, including regular lunches with each other, field trips to mosques and synagogues and other churches, and just simply getting to know each other across the table and through time. They didn't have those kind of opportunities. What they did, though, was in the fall they met outside, and then they met uh, on Zoom when we could no longer provide the safety of the setting that was. And what I learned from them is this, that they learned a lot this year. Several of them told me 
as we were meeting that they read the Bible. One actually texted me, is it okay to read the whole thing? And I said, yes, go for it. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, they, they, they brought a zeal for, and a love for what they were doing. Uh, not all of them had any long experience with First Church. For example, Lila and Abby came to us for this reason, for confirmation, to be with us on this journey. In fact, when Lila stepped into the sanctuary last Sunday morning for her baptism, it was the first time that she and her family had ever stepped foot in the church. And the first thing she did was come to this font to dedicate her life to Jesus Christ. You talk about faith. I'd like to see that for all of us, to have that kind of faith. And Lila also, by the way, is not just faithful, and she is a remarkable, faithful young woman. She's also fast. Yesterday at the state championships, she and her track relay team in the 440 finished third in the state as the fastest team. And they broke their school record by, listen to this, five seconds. I didn't even know that you could get five seconds off a record in the 440. That is really fast. So she's fast, she's smart, she is committed to action in Christ. She is the one who came up with one of our offerings today, the Franklinton Farms, because she wants to garden with those who have nothing, those who have no gardens, those who have no fresh produce. She wants to be there with her hands in the soil. And then I told her this is an offering she said, you mean we don't get to work in the garden? I said, well, we can, but we're going to take an offering first. So that's Lila. And Elias is a rising leader in the scouts. I've known him since he came to this font as a baby. I've known him since the day he was born. And he has stepped into leadership and shown remarkable progress. And he loves being a leader. He has learned so many skills from scouting. And he's faithful. He He's remarkably faithful and gifted in the way he approaches everything and everyone. Jake is chill. There's no other word for Jake. Jake is just really cool. <laughs> so he's calm, he's, but, but on the f soccer field or in the volleyball court, he's fast and furious, right? But Jake is this smart, wonderful, exceptional, loving young man. And Maya, his sister, is like an old soul. Some of you know Maya because she's a rock star. She's been in the Columbus Dispatch more than anybody I know. <laughs> Along with Mr. Mark and the others who have put the flags in the earth to remember the 582,000 who have died of COVID in America, Maya has been there every step of the way through the cold days and the, and, and the days of spring. She has continued to be faithful. And she's that way with everything she does. And Ruby, is a remark, oh, Maya's also a great athlete. They're all really great athletes, except Ruby's athletics are in theater. <laughs> she's, she's remarkably gifted as a writer, as an actor, as a behind the scenes person. She does it all in the theater and she loves the theater. She's really talented. So, so you've got all of these very active, remarkable people and then you've got the prophet boys, Elijah and Samuel. Ever since I baptized them, I said, you've got not only twins, but you've got two prophets, so watch out for yourselves, Lori and Ben. And you know what? They've lived into that prophetic sense of who they are. They've lived into the biblical calling almost of serving others and caring for the poor. They, they're, they're great in lacrosse. And in fact, Sam just made the all-star team and played last night in an all-star game. But they're also really bright. They're the ones who wanted to read the Bible. They're the ones who wanted to study more. And their parents were beside them all the way. And then Abby, also a great softball, volleyball player, but brilliant in every imaginable way. I was telling others earlier that I had the chance to do a makeup session, a tutorial with Abby. And I saw how smart and gifted she was when I was just there in the Zoom room talking to her one-on-one. -on -one. So there you have it. Um, we have all of these remarkable young people. And where does this come from? 
look to their parents. <laughs> their parents are remarkable people too, who have not only guided them through confirmation this year, but guided them through school. Uh, for any parent who's been in that journey with their child, and I'm pointing to Emily, you have been doing double and triple time as teacher and parent. And so they have been by their side through it all. You saw the love today in their faces as they anointed their children with the oil of baptism. It's been a wild year. But if you want to know who these remarkable young people really are, let me tell you one last story. Just before Christmas, I asked if anybody wanted to step up and help with Bethlehem on Broad Street, and all of them raised their hands. And then on what was the most challenging Bethlehem on Broad Street ever, outside really cold Christmas day, with wind and snow, they showed up. Every man who was able to be there, whose family was in town, was at Bethlehem on Broad Street. They made up like half of the volunteers. I mean, they were remarkable. And that's a memory that they have, but it shows who they are. And then when Mr. Mark came to speak to them the other day and they did their final reflection on confirmation, all they could talk about was the youth mission trip. You wanna know who these kids are? They're our next great servants of God. They're the ones who are rising to show us what it looks like to put faith into action. And one last thing. I'm heartbroken to have gone through confirmation the way we did it this year, but they were a salve, a, a balm in Gilead for my heart as I talked to them this past week on Zoom. Each one in their own way said, it's okay, Reverend Tim. We know what we were doing. We were keeping the people of First Church safe and healthy. We did our part. Thanks be to God for these eight remarkable young people. They did their part. Watch what they do next. Amen.